Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry, and today I want to talk about an electrical system control panel, which is this device right here. And it controls all sorts of different functions in the electrical system of an RV. And basically, it controls five things. It controls the inverter, the battery charger, and the turning on and off of the generator, and the turning on and off of your shore power, and then it monitors the percentage charge of your house batteries. So this device here I recently had installed RVs and motorhomes typically come with a much more basic system that only does a few things, doesn't do much really. There's various types of control panels from a very basic one to the most complicated one, which this one is. The standard one that my motorhome came with was about half this size and I needed much more things be able to control and most importantly is the battery state of charge percentage level which a standard control panel will not give you at all now there are various brands of these electrical system control panels and when I upgraded mine I decided to go with the Magnum Energy brand because my inverter is Magnum Energy and this whole control system is based on several components of it is based on Magnum Energy equipment so I didn't want to mix different brands of equipment but I'm sure other brands probably work just as well providing you get a fully functioning unit so I want to show you some of the things that this one does. Two of the really easy things to do is if you push this button, it turns the inverter on and off. You push this button, it turns the charger, the battery charger, on and off. And as you can see now, my batteries are at 74% charge. And also shows you the voltage that your batteries are putting out right now 12.15 volts and then it sh this is the net amps this is the difference between amps going into the batteries when they're being charged netted out with the amps coming out of the batteries powering your equipment right now my batteries are not being charged so I am, it says minus 12 amps. So I'm using 12 amps right now in the entire motorhome. And one of the main functions or most beneficial functions of this control panel is to control when to automatically turn it off your shore power or when to automatically turn it off your generator to charge your batteries. So let me tell you my situation and how I have it programmed right now. I am plugged into a 15 amp shore power system. This is late December and I am going to be plugged in just like I am in this one spot now here for the next five or six months. And 15 amps is all I really need to get me through the winter. This motorhome is a 50 amp motorhome. But you can also function plugged into 30 amp or 20 amp or 15 amp. And 15 amp is really all I need. Because the only reason I would need to go to 30 or 50 amp is to run my air conditioners. That's the only thing I can't do with 15 amp. Is run air conditioners and I'm 
not going to need air conditioning until summer gets here in like June or July. And also, I'm paying metered service for the electricity that I'm using. So, of course, I want to keep my shore power electrical service down to a minimum. And by using this monitor, you can control when you want your batteries to be charged and when you want the shore power to be turned on and off. So I am permanently plugged in to the shore power. And for a while, before I figured this out, I was having to go out and pull the plug on my shore power fairly often when I wanted to be charging my batteries and when I didn't, or when I needed the extra amps and when I didn't. So when I got this programmed, now I don't have to go outside and <laughs> plug or unplug anything. Now I also have 900 watts of solar panels on my roof and I want to get the maximum usage out of the solar panels. This time of the year, December, through the next few months, with the sun being so far to the south and not being a very strong sun and I also have a lot of trees around me, I'm not getting a whole lot of power influx from my solar panels. So I'm having to supplement my battery charging with the power from the shore power. Now in the summer, I wouldn't need to do that because in the summer, the, the so solar panels will charge my batteries up to 100% every single day without any boosting. But in this situation, the way I have this programmed is that when my battery state of charge goes down to 50%, it will then turn on the shore power that is connected and then it will start charging my batteries. And at that point, this where it says minus 20, it will then go up to plus 50 and then if I'm using 10 amps it'll say plus 40 so when it gets down to 50 amps it turns on the shore power which starts charging the batteries and it will keep charging the batteries until it reaches 80 percent charge and I've set it that way you can set that any percentage that you want. For me I've got it set 50 to 80. You, and as a general rule you don't want your batteries to ever get below 50 percent charge or it can harm the batteries and reduce the whole battery life. And the reason why I didn't say charge it until it gets up to 100 percent is that I want to give my solar panels a chance to do some work also. So I cut off the battery charging when the batteries get up to 80% charge. So at that point it will disconnect itself from the shore power and then my solar panels during the day will either keep even with the power that I'm using or it will increase my battery charge a little bit. So I'm hoping that between 80 and 100 will be charged up from my solar panels. Now if you're not plugged in to shore power you can do this exact same thing except that rather than turning the shore power on and off it will turn the generator on and off. I could have it set so that when my battery power gets below 50%, it turns the generator on and the generator will charge up the batteries till it gets up to 80% and then it turns off the generator. I could have it both ways. Since I have shore power, I prefer to use the shore power for battery charging 
mainly because it's a lot less expensive to use short power electricity than to run the generator. And when I'm not using battery charging, by the way, my refrigerator just kicked on, <laughs> so that knocked it up to about 20, minus 29. Now when I am not charging my batteries, then this gets to a minus, could be a minus significant amount. And at that point, I cannot use any high amp appliances, like a toaster oven or anything that is some of my kitchen appliances that is a high amperage type appliance. Or I could, I could go over the, the power that I have available amperage wise and it would trip one of my breakers. So when I do need to use a high power appliance while I'm not charging my batteries, meaning I'm not accepting power from the shore power, then I'll turn my generator on just for a little while that I need to do my cooking running high amp appliances, which is okay because you should run your generator once or twice a month for a half hour or so to do what they call exercise in the generator. You don't want to go a whole month without using your generator or even a, a longer period of time can actually do some or cause some problems with the generator. It's just like if you have a car sitting in the garage and you don't t drive it for months at a time, <laughs> When you try and start it up, it's probably not going to start. You're going to need to service it just to get the thing started. Same thing with the generator. So I hope this has helped you. And I highly recommend this unit. It's the Magnum Energy Model ARC50. And to have the battery monitoring like this where you get the percentage, you also have to install a battery monitor which is just a small little box that is installed next to the batteries in the outside compartment. And then if you want to have it control the generator, you have to have an extra little thing installed that is called a genset. It's a feature that I don't have because I don't have any intention of using this to control my generator. I'd rather do my generator starting and stopping manually. But if I wanted to, I could add that little extra feature to it. I just have to buy a little extra device and connect it in. So I'm very happy with this Magnum Energy ARC50 and the Magnum Energy battery monitor. And like I said, there are other brands of equipment that do the same thing. So if you have a very simple inverter control panel, that doesn't do what you need, then I highly recommend that you upgrade to a better unit like this. Good day, folks.